Gluten is a group of proteins, called prolamins and glutalins, which occur with starch in the endosperm of various cereal grains. This protein complex supplies 75-85% of the total protein in bread wheat. It is found in related wheat species and spelt, barley, rye, and oats, as well as products derived from these grains, such as breads and malts. Glutens, especially triticiae glutens, have unique viscoelastic and adhesive properties, which give dough its elasticity, helping it rise and keep its shape and often leaving the final product with a chewy texture. These properties and its relative low cost are the reasons why gluten is so widely demanded by the food industry and for non-food uses. Prolamins are, by convention, referred to with different names dependent on the grain from which they are sourced. When found in wheat, prolamins are referred to as gliadins, in barley, they are referred to as hordines, in rye, secalins, and in oats, avenins. These protein classes are collectively referred to as gluten. True gluten is limited to these four grains. Gluten can trigger adverse inflammatory, immunological and autoimmune reactions in some people. Gluten can produce a broad spectrum of gluten-related disorders, including celiac disease in 1-2% of the general population, non-celiac gluten sensitivity in 6-10% of the general population, dermatitis herpetiformis, gluten ataxia and other neurological disorders. These disorders are treated by a gluten-free diet. Gluten forms when glutenin molecules cross link via disulfide bonds to form a submicroscopic network attached to gliadin, which contributes viscosity and extensibility to the mix. If this dough is leavened with yeast, fermentation produces carbon dioxide bubbles, which, trapped by the gluten network, cause the dough to rise. Baking coagulates the gluten, which, along with starch, stabilizes the shape of the final product. Gluten content has been implicated as a factor in the staling of bread, possibly because it binds water through hydration. The formation of gluten affects the texture of the baked goods. Gluten's attainable elasticity is proportional to its content of glutenins with low molecular weights, as this portion contains the preponderance of the sulfur atoms responsible for the cross-linking in the gluten network. Further refining of the gluten leads to chewier doughs such as those found in pizza and bagels, while less refining yields tender baked goods such as pastry products. Generally, bread flours are high in gluten while pastry flours have a lower gluten content. Kneading promotes the formation of gluten strands and cross-links, creating baked products that are chewier. The chewiness increases as the dough is kneaded for longer times. An increased moisture content in the dough enhances gluten development, and very wet doughs left to rise for a long time require no kneading. Shortening inhibits formation of cross links and is used, along with diminished water and less kneading, when a tender and flaky product, such as a pie crust, is desired. The strength and elasticity of gluten in flour is measured in the baking industry using a farinograph. This gives the baker a measurement of quality for different varieties of flours when developing recipes for various baked goods. In industrial production, a slurry of wheat flour is kneaded vigorously by machinery until the gluten agglomerates into a mass. This mass is collected by centrifugation, then transported through several stages integrated in a continuous process. About 65% of the water in the wet gluten is removed by means of a screw press, the remainder is sprayed through an atomizer nozzle into a drying chamber, where it remains at an elevated temperature for a short time to allow the water to evaporate without denaturing the gluten. This flour-like powder, when added to ordinary flour dough, may help improve the dough's ability to increase in volume. The resulting mixture also increases the bread's structural stability and chewiness. Gluten-added dough must be worked vigorously to induce it to rise to its full capacity, an automatic bread machine or food processor may be required for high gluten kneading. Generally, higher gluten levels are associated with higher overall protein content. Gluten, especially wheat gluten, is often the basis for imitation meats resembling beef, chicken, duck, fish and pork. When cooked in broth, gluten absorbs some of the surrounding liquid including the flavor and becomes firm to the bite. This use of gluten is a popular means of adding supplemental protein to many vegetarian diets. In home or restaurant cooking, wheat gluten is prepared from flour by kneading the flour under water, agglomerating the gluten into an elastic network known as a dough, and then washing out the starch. 
Gluten is often present in beer and soy sauce, and can be used as a stabilizing agent in more unexpected food products, such as ice cream and ketchup. Foods of this kind may therefore present problems for a small number of consumers because the hidden gluten constitutes a hazard for people with coliac disease and gluten sensitivities. The protein content of some pet foods may also be enhanced by adding gluten. Gluten is also used in cosmetics, hair products and other dermatological preparations. Celiac disease is a chronic, multiple organ autoimmune disorder primarily affecting the small intestine caused by the ingestion of wheat, barley, rye, oats, and derivatives, that appears in genetically predisposed people of all ages. Celiac disease is not only a gastrointestinal disease, because it may involve several organs and cause an extensive variety of non-gastrointestinal symptoms, and most importantly, it may be apparently asymptomatic. Many asymptomatic people actually are not, but have become accustomed to living with a chronic bad health status as if it were normal, and they are able to recognize that they actually had symptoms related to celiac disease after starting the gluten-free diet and improvement as evident, in contrast to the situation prior to the diet. People with gluten-related disorders have to remove gluten from their diet strictly, so they need clear labeling rules. The term, gluten-free, is generally used to indicate a supposed harmless level of gluten rather than a complete absence. The exact level at which gluten is harmless is uncertain and controversial. A 2008 systematic review tentatively concluded that consumption of less than 10 mg of gluten per day is unlikely to cause intestinal damage in people with celiac disease, although it noted that few reliable studies had been done. Regulation of the label, gluten-free, varies.